Hi guys and welcome to our third lesson on archaeology. So um, we've already looked at what an archaeologist does and how they identify a site. So today we're going to look at what happens when they identify the site. What is the process of excavation? So we're going to begin with our learning outcomes as always. So by the end of this presentation you should know how an excavation site is set up. You should be able to name three tools used by an archaeologist and their function and you should know what an archaeologist does when they find an artifact. So we're going to look at uh, how an excavation site is set up. What is the process by which an archaeologist will go and scientifically excavate a site. So the first thing they will do is they will dig a trial trench as a way to discover if the site is worth further investigation. So if they feel that, look, there is a very low probability of there being any uh, historical significant, historically significant artifacts in this area, after they dig their trial trench, they will abandon the dig. Okay. So, but if they find out that it is worth further investigation, they will then seal off the site area from the general public. So that's to make sure that the site remains safe and that nothing is removed and no one comes in and damages any potential artifacts that will be there. Once they've sealed off the site, they will remove the topsoil. Okay, so that's the grass on top, okay, or the soil on top. Um, and again, there wouldn't be anything of real significant historical value in the topsoil. So that can be removed sometimes even with a tool as clumsy as a JCB just to get that top bit off, okay? So the next thing to do is they will draw a site grid. So on a site grid, each square is given a number and a letter, okay? And this identifies the location of the discovered artifact. And I'm going to show you a slide next to give you a better idea of this. Generally, from what I've experienced, a square is... Um, usually a five meter square. So each side is five meters, okay? So it's got a surface area of 20 meters squared uh, in each square. Um, so once the site grid has been set up, they will then finally begin digging using the proper equipment. So here's an example of what a site grid might look like. Um, as you can see, the letters are along the top, A, B, C, D, and then along the side, we have the numbers one, two, three, four. So, and we have four objects on our site grid. So in A1, as you can see, there's a bone, okay? If you come down to the left-hand bottom corner, there's a chalice. And as you can see, if you look which square it's in, on the top, it says A, and down along the side, it says four. Um, our next one up in the top right hand corner is a set of ruins. Now as you can see the ruins here are straddling a couple of different squares. So how we would record that is we would record it, we would say uh, the ruins or artifact were found in the location C1, C2, D1 and D2. And finally in the bottom right hand corner we have a set of coins and again this is straddling two different uh, squares and um, so the way we would record that is we would record it by saying the coins or the artifacts were found in location C1 and D1 on the back. So um, to just recap how uh, dig is set up, first thing we do is we dig a trial trench, second we will seal off the area then we will remove the topsoil, then we will draw a site grid, and finally we will start digging. Okay, so when we start digging, what tools are we going to use? Okay, and this is one of those jobs where a hammer won't get the job done. So the first tool we use is called a flat-edged shovel. Now it's important that it's a flat-edged shovel, and this is one of the most important tools that an archaeologist will use. So the archaeologist doesn't want to dig a hole as quickly as possible, okay? So what they want to do is they want to remove small amounts of earth each time. So they'll make a little dig into the ground, move the soil to the side, okay? And they're just removing small amounts because they don't want to damage anything that might be in the ground. 
once they remove a bit of soil, they'll put it in this sieve or soil sifter, okay? And they shake it back and forward, and it separates the soil and the stones from any other objects. Then everything that's left is carefully examined, so pieces of wood or stone or anything that's left in the sieve, just to see if it has been crafted by humans or if it's something that was left over from something that humans crafted. Um, even if it's a piece of broken pottery or if it's an ornament or if it's a microlith or a stone ac um, axe head, any of these um, things would be valuable information to an archaeologist. So if they find something that is worth investigating, they will usually get a brush, clean it off, so they can get a better look at it. Sometimes there will be hardened soil on it, and they will use a toothbrush um, to remove the hardened soil. Of course, uh, not everything is just going to be lying there in the ground and it's easily accessible, so sometimes you'll need a tool like a hand pick to get you some of the, some stone in the way, some things that need to, that the shovel just won't do, okay? Next, we have a trowel. So a trowel can be used, and it is used to kind of move through the soil more carefully. And also, it is used to ensure that um, your little section that you're digging doesn't collapse, okay? So you can neatly build almost like a little wall, think of, uh, to stop it from falling in. Um, our next tool is surveying equipment. So we use they use surveying equipment to get a, f a look at the topography of the land. So what I mean by the topography of the land is they're looking for dips and hills and mounds and all these different gradients or um, furrows in the, in the landscape. And this is something that will become important in our next lesson when we look at a thing called stratigraphy. But for now, all you need to know is that this is one of the tools they use. They use survey methods. Uh, next, they use photographic scales. So a photographic scale is a stick that is about a meter long. It's generally a meter long. It is red and it is white. And they put this, whenever an artifact is found, they put it beside a photographic scale, or as you can see from the photo in the bottom left-hand corner, they'll put the photographic scale within the artifact or the ruin that's found. And this is just to give a scale. If we know that this stick is always a meter long, then we can say, all right, well, then this ruin is significantly bigger than a meter long. Because sometimes with photos, it's hard to get the actual scale, okay? Um, another tool we use is a field computer. So we will feed all our information on the, where we found the artifact in the site grid um, and everything that we have got to this point of images, pictures, everything will go into the field computer. That's the computer that is on site. Okay. And the final tool that we will use is a polytheme bank. So once we found an artifact, we've cataloged it, we uh, input the data into the field computer, we put our artifact in a little polythene bag and we're going to label it, and then it's going to be sent off to the lab. Okay, so again, what we're going to look at here now is we've discovered, imagine now we've discovered our um, artifact, we've discovered a bone on the grid in A1 after using all um, of our tools to discover it. So, um, what happens? Our artifacts and our bones and plant remains, they're all catalogued. Okay, so that means they're all put into this um, system within a field computer. Next are photographs and drawings. Drawings are very important on archaeology site, and drawings are made of the site or findings. Uh, next, the artifact is placed in the polythene bag, which we showed you, and it's labeled with where it was found and the date of the finding. Uh, the finds are then sent to a lab to be dated, and then hopefully they're sent on to a museum to be displayed. Now, um, after that presentation, you should now know how an excavation site is set up. You should be able to name three tools used by an archaeologist in their function, and you should know what an archaeologist does when they find an artifact. Okay, thanks for listening, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in class.